So we are going to talk about light waves today. So what is a light wave? Now, we normally say that light waves are transverse electromagnetic waves. Transverse, transverse electromagnetic waves, okay? So we said that light waves are transverse electromagnetic. So what do we mean by that? So when we say that light wave is transverse, transverse means that it travels perpendicular to its what? source. And when we say electromagnetic, what does that mean? It means that it does not require material medium for its what? Propagation. So that is what light wave is. Remember, in our previous video, we talked about revoxy. Okay? Revoxy. And the person we are talking about today is what? V, which is the visible light. Okay? So when we talk about light wave, we need to talk about the sources. We need to talk about the sources of light. We need to talk about the sources of what? Light. So when we talk about sources of light, it means where and where can we get light waves from. Okay? Now, usually, the sources of light can be classified broadly into two classes. And what is those broad classifications? So we have the ones we call the luminous sources. Luminous sources. And we have the one we call the what? Non-luminous. Non-luminous sources. So these are the two sources of light. Now, when we say luminous sources, what are luminous sources? Luminous sources are sources of light that produce their own light. So any source that produces its own light is called a luminous source. Now, very important. Students normally get confused whenever you tell them about luminous source. They think that luminous source is only natural sources, but that is not true. So when you say luminous source, it can be both natural and what? Artificial. So the main thing you need to know about luminous source is that it must produce its own what? Light. That is what luminous sources are. Then on the other hand, Okay, let me talk about examples here, then we'll discuss about what this one is. So when we talk about luminous sources, examples of luminous sources, remember I said it can be natural or artificial. Examples of luminous sources here, of course, the most important guy is the sun. We have the stars. We have the stars here. These are examples. We have the firefly. We have the fire. We have the fireflies. Fireflies. Okay, we have candles. So when you have a candle, when you put on a candle, your candle is an example of um, a luminous source. We have our bulbs. We have our bulbs. Okay, the bulbs you have in your house. We have your street lights, street lights, etc. So these are examples of luminous world sources. Mind you that these examples include both natural and what artificial sources of light. So it does not really matter, provided they produce their own light. That is what we call what luminous world sources. Then on the other hand, we have non-luminous sources. They are sources that do not produce their own light. Instead, they what? They reflect light. Take notes. So non-luminous sources reflect light from luminous sources. They don't produce their own light. What they do is what? They reflect the light from other what? Sources. Now, examples of non-luminous sources, example is the moon. You might be like, ah, no, why? What is why? Uh, what are you saying? You said um, that luminous sources produce their own light. What happens? But the moon used to shine in the night. Yes, I know that the moon shines at night, but the light from the moon is not the moon producing the light. Okay, who is producing that light? It is the sun. What the moon is basically doing is that it is reflecting the light. So look at what happens. So remember, this is the sun. Sorry, this is the earth. Let's have our earth here. This is the sun somewhere here. This is the sun. And then the moon somewhere here. This is the moon. So remember, at night, night is when you are on the other side of the sun. So if you are not facing the sun, you have night. If you are facing the sun, you have day. So what happens? You see that the, the sun is always shining towards the moon. So at night, because this part of the earth is experiencing night, the moon can reflect the light from the sun. You see, when the sunlight strikes the moon, it will reflect the light from that moon, and then we will see it on earth. And that is how our moon usually would shine in the night. Good. Then, example, another example of non-luminous sources, uh, you can say um, opaque objects, okay? Generally, all opaque objects. Okay, opaque objects. 
opaque objects. So what are opaque objects? Objects that do not allow light to what? To pass through it. So as a human being, I am an opaque object. Okay? But what do I do? I am not luminous. I am non-luminous. I reflect light from luminous what? Sources. You can also reflect light from other sources also. Okay? So even though um, our our Bible tells us that we are the light of the world. Yes, that light is not the literal form of light. Okay? Good. So when we talk about light being light, the light here means that we are not luminous sources. We are not luminous. What we do is we reflect what light from other sources. So any opaque object you can think of here is an example of what a non-luminous object or source of light. Okay? So that is that about the sources of light. Okay, now we are going to talk about rectilinear propagation of light. Rectilinear li guy, koto <laughs> spelling no one come. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not. Be, the light of the world. No, be say you they shine like bulb. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey. 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 Propagation. Ah. Na na rect na rectly na na one for one conformant. Okay, I read you. So, we are going to talk about rectilinear propagation of lights. Of lights. Okay? So, what does this mean? Now, basically, when we say rectilinear propagation of light, it is a theory that supports the assumption that light travels on a straight line. Okay? So, scientists come, came together and agreed that light travels on a straight line, of course, with some experiments. And they came up with a theory that says that light travels on a what? On a straight line. Now, but of course, there are some simple evidence that we are going to use to know that light actually travels on a what? On a straight line. And some of these evidence you should know because of your examination are we have, we have um, formation of shadows, formation of shadows, we have formation of shadows, we have formation of eclipse, and then we have image formation by pinhole camera. Image formation by pinhole camera. Okay? So these are your evidence that show that light travels on a what? On a straight line. So when we say formation of shadows, of course, what is a shadow? A shadow is formed when an opaque object obstructs the movement of light. So as a human being now, if you come out outside where there is sun, you see that because you obstruct the movement of light, that light does what? Casts your shadow on the ground because you are an opaque object. Assuming you were a transparent object, the light can easily pass through you and will not cast your shadow. Okay? But because we are opaque objects, our shadows are formed because we obstruct the movement of what? Light. And then on the other hand, we have formation of eclipse. Now, the key word here is eclipse. What is an eclipse? Now, an eclipse is a natural phenomena which occurs, okay? An eclipse is a natural phenomena which occurs when the planetary bodies, when we say planetary bodies, we are talking about Earth, we are talking about Sun, and we are talking about Moon. Okay, when the three planetary bodies are aligned, when the three planetary bodies are what aligned, so an eclipse occurs when the planetary bodies, which is Earth, Sun, and Moon, are perfectly what aligned, meaning they are on a what on a straight line. And then you should know that there are two types of eclipse. Okay, we are going to come back to the third point later. Okay, there are two types of eclipse. So when we talk about eclipse, there are of how many types? Two types. And the two types, we have solar eclipse, and then we have lunar eclipse. Okay, we have lunar eclipse. 
Now, what is a solar eclipse and what is a lunar eclipse? Now, a solar eclipse can also be called eclipse of the sun. Okay? Lunar eclipse can also be called eclipse of the moon. Now, when we say a solar eclipse, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon is between the sun and the earth. What did I say? I said a solar eclipse occurs when the moon is between the sun and the what? Earth. So, imagine this is the sun. This is the sun. This is the moon. And then this is your earth. So because the moon is in between the sun and the earth, you see that the shadow of the moon will be casted on the what? On the earth's surface. It will be casted on the earth's surface. That is what we call a solar what? Eclipse. Then on the other hand, we have lunar eclipse, which is eclipse of the moon, which occurs when the earth is between the sun and the what? Moon. So look at this. We have the sun. So the earth is at the middle now. This is our earth, and then this is our moon. This is our moon. This is our moon. Moon on this side. This is the earth, and this is the sun. So this is the major difference between the two types of eclipse that we have. So a solar eclipse occurs when the moon is in between, and then a lunar eclipse occurs when the earth is what? In between. That is what happens in an eclipse. Okay? So... This is the second evidence. On the other hand, we have a third evidence to show that light travels on a straight line, and that evidence is formation of images by pinhole what? cameras. Formation of images by pinhole cameras. Okay?